If you're a living, breathing human being, you've heard about Pokemon Go. It's a worldwide phenomenon. You can literally walk out your front door and find people playing it. Starting the game as a beginner can be a bit daunting. We'll explain the basics and get you started on your way toward a Pokemon master. Pokemon Go consists of three main basic parts. Catching Pokemon, visiting Pokestops, and gym battles. We'll also cover a few extras to help you on your way. First, let's catch some Pokemon. Tap the tab in the bottom right corner to see nearby Pokemon. The distance is shown by the number of footprints under each Pokemon. Zero means you're practically on top of it, while three means it's far away. The idea is to walk around and use the footprints to help you find the Pokemon. Once you're close enough, your phone will vibrate and the Pokemon will appear on the map. Tap on it to catch it. To catch the Pokemon, you have to hit it with a Pokeball. Simply swipe the ball like you're playing a basketball game. It takes some practice to get accurate. One trick is to hold the Pokeball until the colored circle is at the smallest and then throw it. Once you catch the Pokemon, it will be added to your Pokedex and you'll see a bunch of information about it. Now, let's visit a Pokestop. Pokestops are depicted on the map as a floating blue square. This is where you can stock up on Pokeballs and other items. When you get close enough to a Pokestop, it will transform into a rotating disc. Tap the Pokestop and then swipe your finger quickly over the disc to spin it and the items will fly out. Tap the items to collect them. The Pokestop will turn purple when you're done, but it can be revisited every 5-10 to 10 minutes when it goes back to blue. At first, catching Pokemon and visiting Pokestops is the only thing you'll be able to do, but after you reach level 5, you can go to a gym and do battle. Now, when you go to a gym the first time, you'll have to pick a team. There are three teams, Team Instinct, which is yellow, Team Mystic, which is blue, and Team Valor, which is red. After you pick a team, you'll see that there are three types of gyms. Neutral, Friendly, and Enemy. A neutral gym is not controlled by any team. It will be gray on the map. Anyone can claim it by simply tapping the gym and assigning one of your Pokemon to defend it. You probably won't find too many of neutral gyms in the wild. Friendly Gym is any gym controlled by your team. At these gyms, you can practice battle amongst teammates to raise the gym's level. You choose one Pokemon to go up against the Pokemon defending the gym. Win or lose, practicing is good for your team, and it can level up the gym. Leveling up a gym makes it more difficult to overtake. Praxine is also a good way to earn more XP for your character. As you may have guessed, an enemy gym is controlled by the other teams. In these battles, you can use up to six Pokemon to go up against the other team. Battling is not turn-based like most Pokemon games. All you do is tap the screen to attack, swipe left or right to dodge, and when your blue bars fill, long press to use your special power. Every time you defeat the enemies, it knocks the gym down one level. To conquer the gym, you'll have to defeat the enemies until it becomes neutral. Then you can claim it for your team. If you're lucky enough to defeat an enemy and claim a gym as your own, there are a few things you should know. The Pokemon you choose to defend the gym will be unavailable to you until it's defeated. You'll know when your Pokemon has been defeated when it's back in your list of Pokemon and has only 1 HP. Once you've mastered catching Pokemon, visiting Pokestops, and doing gym battles, you're well on your way, but there are a few extra things you should know when you're getting started. You can use a power-up to improve your combat power of a Pokemon. This is done by collecting Stardust and Candy, which you get when you collect a Pokemon. Go into the Pokemon list and select the one you'd like to power up. If you have enough items, you can tap the power up button and points will be added to the combat power. You can also evolve your Pokemon. To do this, you'll need candy and lots of it. Once you have enough, you can go into the list and tap evolve and watch your Pokemon transform into a brand new Pokemon. The last thing you should know about is eggs. You'll probably find a lot of these at Pokestops along with Pokeballs. Eggs are unhatched Pokemon, and you can hatch them by walking. Once you collect one, go into the Eggs tab and tap on an egg. Tap Start Incubation, and then you'll be able to see how far you have to walk. Most of them are from 2 to 5 kilometers, and the screen has to be on for the steps to count. When you've walked enough, the egg will pop up on the screen and hatch in front of you, and you'll have a brand new Pokemon. Now, there's a lot more to Pokemon Go, but that's kind of one of the fun things, is you kind of discover it as you go. With everything in this video, you'll be well on your way to becoming a Pokemon Master. For more information and fellow players, go to the Pokemon Go forum at androidforums.com, and you'll find lots more information and more people playing. Thanks for watching, and catch them all!